so much simpler when it's all mapped out. Mm. Hang the DJ is Black Mirror's take on modern love, and it's surprisingly more hopeful than we might expect, at least in the context of Black Mirror. Sorry. Fork. Amy. I don't know, my name's not Fork. Yeah, I guessed. It's just... Oh, it's, it's Frank. The season four episode works through our shared anxieties and mixed feelings about the age of dating apps. It paints the picture of an increasingly mathematical approach to love and expresses our society's fears that we could be bringing about the death of romance. Okay, seriously, what are we meant to do? Query too broad. Please narrow. I mean, are we just meant to, I don't know, like just go at it? Define go at it? <gasps> But in the end, Hank the DJ arrives at a sweetly heartwarming place. It's season four of San Junipero for its successful romance featuring a couple who in some form end up together. The episode reassures us that even if some aspects may change drastically and get a bit creepier, the heart's will to find love can overcome the obstacles we throw at it because nothing helps love more than having a good strong obstacle to fight against. Ever since we've met, this world has been toying with us. It's trying to keep us apart. Before we go on, be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all of our new videos. Yeah. Hang the DJ follows Amy and Frank inside a mysterious system that promises to pair them with their perfect match through studying how they respond to arranged relationships of predetermined lengths. Shall we check our expiry date? One thing that makes Hang the DJ a very successful episode is the chemistry between the two leads, played by Georgina Campbell and Joe Cole. One of us should get undressed first. Why only one of us? It'll be funny. Even though they have so little time to get us invested in the romance, they quickly make the viewer want to see them together. So the episode has the urgency of a good romance, and it has a strong antagonist to the romance in the system, which is supposedly finding the perfect person that Amy and Frank are each meant to be with. The couple ultimately decide to rebel against the system, to choose each other over their mathematically calculated soulmate. I don't want whoever the system reckons the one is, okay? I want you. I want you. But the irony inherent in the test is that while the couple think they're bucking the system, refusing to let it tell them their perfect match, really they're digital copies in a contrived simulation to mathematically tell people their perfect match. What if that's us and we're stuck in the simulation? Well, how do we know? It's a clever contradiction within the matchmaking app that for the copies to win the simulation and come out as a match, they have to disobey the system and escape together. It's a test, I swear it is, and the two of us rebelling together is something to do with passing it. The copies have to do a very human feeling, reckless, boldly romantic thing. Yeah, over the wall. Fight over it. No matter what's out there. As Amy and Frank climb up the ladder to escape their controlled reality, briefly it looks like we're in the final scene of The Truman Show. Who knows what great unscripted life awaits them beyond. But instead, it's revealed that this bold romantic gesture was also part of the simulation, part of the math. Paradoxically, it's what they're supposed to do. It's worth noting that building the obstacle into the matchmaking isn't as new as it might seem. We can actually see this idea in Shakespeare. In The Tempest, Prospero realizes that his daughter Miranda is falling in love with the new guy who's arrived on their island, Ferdinand. But Prospero knows that love struggles to succeed without obstacles, so he purposely pretends to oppose the match in order to give the young couple a chance. They are both in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. The app in Hang the DJ is essentially doing the same thing Prospero does for his daughter, making it hard for the couple so they can decide if they care enough to fight for their love. Thus the idea of encouraging the couple to see the system as their antagonist is entirely logical. If we look at romantic stories, from Romeo and Juliet to Casablanca, from the Odyssey to Brokeback Mountain, in pretty much all of these, the character's love is strengthened because they have to fight against huge obstacles that make them realize how much they really do love. The title, Hang the DJ, comes from the Smith song, Panic, that plays at the end of the episode. We hear the lyrics, <laughs> So these words refer to the couple's decision to not let the system or the DJ choose which music they should dance to, which person they should love. Incidentally, Charlie Brooker's idea for the episode apparently came from imagining a dating app that works a lot like Spotify's algorithm. 
But the irony, of course, is that this couple is not only listening to a song that some kind of DJ, digital or human, has chosen, but also relying on this app to tell them if they belong together. So maybe their copies did, but the real humans are not at all hanging the DJ. The point is that true love feels like it's rebelling against the big world that won't let it be together, even if that's not really the case. And if it was okay for Prospero to help Miranda and Ferdinand, what's wrong with a really good algorithm playing benevolent god to young lovers? Amy and Frank hear the words hang the DJ repeated over and over at the end. So they still feel like they're choosing, like they're rebelling, because love feels like a revolution every time. Hang the DJ is raising questions about fate and free will that have always been a part of romance, especially when it comes to the concept of soulmates. Are two people meant to be together? And if so, who means them to be? Is there a fate, some kind of god or creator who's making people to be perfect matches? Amy and Frank think they're choosing each other over fate itself, but it turns out fate is kind of encouraging them to do that. It's just that this fate isn't god or destiny, it's the algorithm of some dating app. Meanwhile, in addition to these thoughts about fate, it's so important that free will is part of the equation in any love. Wait, um, can we not check the expiry date? Uh, why? I'm just sick of it. Like, the system just bounced me from bloke to bloke. If we're told for sure that someone's our soulmate, then by being with them, we're just following instructions. Basically acting like machines, like a robot obeying an algorithm. So always there's this tension between, on the one hand, finding or holding out for the one, that person who's a perfect match. Do you have faith in the system? Because it does deliver. And on the other hand, following our own wills and hearts, taking a risk by choosing somebody, and not knowing if this is ordained by anything, knowing simply that it's what I want. Frank, I choose Frank. So free will is why it's key that the simulation couple needs to defy the system in order to pass the test, because real love moves us to take fate into our own hands. The 99.8% match Amy and Frank get means their copies escape together almost every time they take the test. That almost is key though, because 99.8% is not 100. Just as the couples decide to be together, instead of holding out for whomever the system tells them is perfect, the original humans who just got this result on their dating app will have to decide if they choose the 99.8% or hold out for some theoretical 100. This element of choice, the bold decision to be with someone and not wait for the math to tell you it's an inevitability, is still part of the picture, and it has to be a part of love. Given that the app clearly understands the paradoxical complexities of romance, it may not even have a 100% match option for these reasons. And perhaps the Amy and Frank who are using the app may actually struggle more as a couple than the copies did, because they don't have any bigger obstacle than the 0.2% missing from their score. What's really interesting here is the way that Hang the DJ rehashes these age-old questions of romantic fate and free will through applications of technology. So we get a version of the idea of soulmates, of being together in multiple lives or planes of consciousness, of always finding each other again and again, but this is manifested through tech. It, it felt like, it felt like something locked into place, you know, like we met before. Like it, like it happened before and like it'll happen again, like it's happened a thousand times over and over again. Even before they meet in person, it's like Amy and Frank have lived this whole story many, many times, and maybe on some remote spiritual level, they sort of know it. Maybe somehow they almost remember what they've been through in those 998 other versions of themselves, and that's part of what they're communicating in this glance at the end of the episode. Despite all these romantic ideas and the presumably happy ending, there's also a much darker reading to the story. Some viewers might focus on the fact that the actual couple we follow turn out to be digital copies who are presumably deleted, or you might say killed if they truly are sentient copies of Amy and Frank's consciousnesses. Some viewers might feel let down that the stakes of this big sacrifice the couple went through weren't what we thought. We felt like this was happening over years, but in our world, it was just two people checking each other out on their phones in an instant. So it's all smaller and less momentous than we'd hoped. 
We have to quickly transfer our hopes from the specific digital copies of Amy and Frank we've gotten to know onto their human originals. So the viewer might feel confused because the way we process the romance narrative is very much about investing ourselves into a specific pair of people and them coming together. Yet even though it's dark that the digital copies of Amy and Frank just get erased, their reality does end with the joy of coming together. And even though digital copies sound less substantial to us than a so-called real person, numerous episodes of Black Mirror have proven to us by now that if the copies are sentient, then we shouldn't see them as any less real. What copy Amy and Frank lived through happened. So Hang the DJ isn't glossing over the creepiness of some developments in modern or future love. Everything happens for a reason. What reason? The system will be assessing your reaction to the painful premature termination of a treasured relationship and will adjust and improve its profile of your eventual chosen one accordingly. You're a great comfort. But it is giving us hope that, like we saw in San Junipero, tech actually does have the ability to help us connect better with each other, even if we more often use it to make things worse. Hey, if an algorithm could really help you find your soulmate, is it such a bad thing that an app isn't what you used to think of as romantic? Charlie Brooker said of the ending, I hope the takeaway is that it's playful and hopeful. It's easy to predict the death of romance in the age of swiping right, or to go the other way and say now dating should be easy, simple, and perfect. Must have been mental before the system. People had to do the whole relationship thing themselves. But this episode of Black Mirror preserves the tension between our anxieties and hopefulness about the tech-driven future of love. Sometimes we might feel like throwing out the DJ and going back to just finding music on our own. But we can take comfort in the fact that there have always been matchmakers in one form or another, and lovers will always feel like they're breaking through and rebelling against the matchmaker. Hang the DJ gives us new spins on the age-old questions of romance. Do we really want to be with the person that we're perfectly compatible with, if that takes away our feeling that we dare to choose? And even if we think we're making the brave choice to follow our hearts, are we really free, or just following the mathematical certainties of fate anyway? As romance evolves with our technology, some good things may be lost, some bad things could improve, and underneath it all, the age-old questions of what the heart wants and what's meant to be will continue to manifest in one form or another. Yeah, let's not check the expiry then. Yeah. It's a deal. Deal. Okay. Bring on Les Fish Cake. I'm Deborah. I'm Susanna, and we're the creators of Screen Prism. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Down there. <laughs>